Hey, my name is Bryce Boynton. I'm the audio director here at Flatirons Church, located in Colorado. Flatirons Church started in 1983, and it was a church plant that came out of a couple different churches in the Boulder area. Flatirons has really grown over the years, and it's been really exciting to see its growth uh, pretty exponentially, especially since we've moved into this current facility. We were seeing about 10,000 people a weekend, and since then, from 2011 till now, that attendance has just about doubled in size to where we see about 18 to 20,000 people. In order to facilitate that many people attending on a weekend, I'm really fortunate to be a part of a really talented production team that supports eight services across three different campuses right now. At our Lafayette campus, we have three audio team members. Uh, myself, I get to oversee the weekend process and what happens behind me here. I also have Ryan Lynette, he's our broadcast and web and post-production engineer. And we also have Kevin Mitchell, who's our uh, ministry production director and oversees all the technical aspects for other ministries in the building. Our production team puts so much time and energy into helping support these services with both the music and the message. We really want to support the music so that the music creates an environment where people uh, can open and prepare their hearts and minds to hear the message. And then we support the message and produce it in a way where it can get out to as many people as possible. Flatirons is a place where, where we have a lot of people that attend who have, have maybe been burnt out by church in the past um, or have had a, had a bad experience, and they're giving this place a second shot. Flatirons really has no marketing plan, but one of our values is come and see. If we can play a song that, you know, maybe really off the cuff, we'll do anything from Eminem to Marilyn Manson, <laughs> you know? And, and it, if we can help people just unclench their fists just a little bit, uh, maybe they'll listen to the bald guy too. <laughs> we really want to emphasize a high quality signal chain uh, across the board because your signal chain is only as strong as the lowest common denominator. We want to pair things well with high quality microphones and high quality preamps and high quality converters. Especially here at Lafayette campus, this is considered the broadcast campus. So everything downstream from here is reliant on our quality. To start that signal chain, we want to make sure we're using high quality and reliable and durable microphones. Uh, that's why we use a large number of Sennheiser mics. Of course, the standards like the MD421 or the 906 or the 945, those are, those are standards and standouts in the Sennheiser world because they're first and foremost durable and they can, they can stand up in the live production environment. There's a lot of moving pieces. Before working at Flatirons, uh, I spent a lot of time recording orchestras and classical music and jazz. And in that world, I used Sennheiser microphones extensively even then, and it always stood out to me the, the quality and clarity and precision that those microphones provided, the MKH 800s or the 8040s or the 8000 series microphones. When you're recording an orchestra, you might be using two microphones, maybe four. Oftentimes less is more, but the precision of those small number of channels is so paramount. Then I jumped into the Flatirons environment where we're doing rock and roll. And we have maybe 50 channels that we're mixing. But ultimately, the signal integrity of all of those channels, say up to 50 channels, is still so important because at the end of the day, it's the sum of all the parts. It was really cool to be able to see how I would use a small number of really great microphones from Sennheiser for an orchestra and then carry those same microphones over to this environment and still expect the same quality of results. Wireless is really interesting because uh, for the most part in today's digital age, we're not sending microphone signals back through a preamp. So the clarity of the vocals is largely dependent on the quality of your wireless, both the capsule and that wireless transmitter. And so there's so much emphasis that's always put on the wireless factor and the, the transmission quality of the wireless, but it's easy to forget how important the actual microphone preamp and converter are in that whole in the whole process. And that's something like that Sennheiser wireless microphones seem to nail. It it's that the the capsules are of utmost quality, the preamps in those handhelds is quality and it, there's quality conversion. And then it's just like a given, it's a default that of course the RF quality is the same as well. In any metropolitan area across the states, RF environments are getting more and more crowded more of the spectrum is being sold off and there's less room uh, as we're competing with digital television stations and all of that. So having uh, 
a wireless system that's very agile, has a really wide tuning range, um, has very narrow bandwidth, um, and can be really easily coordinated with a large number of channels is really important. Uh, even here in Denver, where the RF spectrum may be not as crowded as uh, in New York on Broadway in the theater district, but still we have to be aware of, um, of how our RF spectrum is being used. And in this building, which I'd say we don't use a, a crazy amount of wireless, we still probably have maybe 30 to 40 channels going at a time. And somehow those all still have to work together. If the band is trying to create a really worshipful experience so that people can connect with God, the last thing they want to be worried about is whether their pack's going to be cutting out on them. So I really appreciate the RF reliability and stability that the Sennheiser gear has brought. So now that we've been talking about all this technical gear, let's actually go look and see what happens on a flat iron stage. <laughs> 